Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin Yoku, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, February 22nd, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. The big one, the largest X flare of the solar cycle so far, X 6.3, just blasted off the sun. And this is all coming, all these X flares coming from region 3590, which unfortunately is facing Earth and will be for the next week. Holy macaroni. Another big story breaking. We just returned to the moon's surface for the first time since 1972. Keep calm. It's boom time. Snow and cooler temperatures loom over Chicago forecast. Uh, it's just a smattering of snow, nothing to worry about. And 60s to snow showers in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What else is new? Grand solar minimum much? And another talking point, the Sierra's remarkable recovery. Snow drought fears overturned in an atmospheric river flash. Let's take a look at those uh, snow basins in question. Everything green and blue, even the yellow, all about average. The darker blue at 140% of average. So everything looking good in here for the most part for California. As Nevada looking spectacular. Many of the basins are perfect. It is the north that we are worried about. And uh, I can't keep blowing this up. So many of the northern basins lacking snow. The good news is on the GFS model, lots of snow coming to Montana and the Pacific Northwest. So that is good news. As a powerful storm could bring nasty weather from coast to coast next week. Holy macaroni. Here's the forecast. Showers and storms in the south and east. Elevated fire weather concerns in southwest Texas. A cold front continues to move across the eastern half of the U.S. today, increasing rain and thunderstorm chances in the south and along the eastern seaboard. There is also a possibility for some mixed precipitation in the northeast. In Texas, elevated fire weather concerns remain in the southwest due to gusty winds and dry conditions. Almost nothing happening on this map, which is good news. Here is that weather system in the east coast, which is going to rapidly make its way offshore before the severe weather happens on Saturday. Take a look at that. And the, look at that. It's going to be relatively quiet for the weekend until Monday when a system moves into the Pacific Northwest and brings heavy snow to the Sierras once again and the Four Corners region. Take a look at that. We need the moisture, and it is certainly going to be moist. Let's take a look at the GFS model and walk it through. Here is just the next few hours into... Friday night, Saturday morning, you can see some lingering snow in the northeast, light flurries, and that little bit of snow there for Wisconsin and uh, Indiana there. Okay, for the weekend, here is Saturday through Sunday and into Monday morning. By Monday morning, heavy snow in the Pacific Northwest is going to drop down the Sierra Spine and then hit the Four Corners region by Wednesday, February 28th. And then, you know what that means. Well, then it's a leap year because we have February 29th, and they're adding a day. Hey, hey, holy macaroni. Yeah, it's all make-believe, folks. We just make it up as we go. As we take a look at the spring systems through the first week of March, looks like the West Coast's higher elevations will be tilting with the snow. Now, March is the biggest snow month for our region in southern Colorado, and it's looking like four to six feet or more, which is good news through March 9th. Mongolia's largest snowfall since 1975. Say it ain't snow. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. Al Gore says he's got a condo in Mongolia, and it never snows there. Gulmark looks like Antarctica, and Europe's forecast for heavy snow as well. Vostok plunges to minus 60.7 degrees centigrade, which is minus 77.3 Fahrenheit. And we've got X flares. And we've got earthquakes. A 6.3 just blasted off the Pacific rise as I bloviate here on the show. Ho, ho. Interesting quakes here in Oklahoma, probably due to fracking. So, not that interesting. What do we got going on up here in Stillwater, Washington? Are we near a volcano? Holy macaroni. Let's take a look on the satellite. We are on the volcanic crest there with some seismic activity. Not near any 
of the existing volcanoes, but at the right distance inland to suggest maybe, just maybe, there is some magma moving. What say you? Leave a comment below. Seismic uh, Worldwide Volcano News Update. We've got Ducono puffing and passing here. Explosions persisting today. Overall normal activity, nothing really to report. What I want to get to is the major solar flare. Large CME is unlikely, thank God. A major solar flare, the largest of the solar cycle, measuring X 6.3, was detective, detected around active sunspot region 3590 at 22-34 UTC today. It's the largest solar flare in terms of peak X-rays since September of 2017, which is quite a few years ago. Although a bright flare, a lack of coronal dimming means the coronal mass ejection will be unlikely from this particular event, as well as the rest of the X flares. And that's not showing up there. That is really bizarre. Here is that sunspot region in question. And there you can see that X flare. Holy macaroni. So multiple X flares. One, two, three in a 24 hour period. That is a record. And we are at Solar Max, albeit quite a weak solar cycle, one of the weakest in centuries. Not as weak as cycle 24, but what is this leading up to? Are we going to even have a cycle 26? Will we go into deep grand solar minimum? Anybody's guess. Now let's take a look. So there's no CME from these X flares, but a plasma filament did lift off the surface just the other day here. And that is space weather headed our way potentially on the 25th. Let's take a look. Ooh, there's that X flare again. Here, I can run it through here so you can see just what this baby did. It actually dimmed. See this? Multiple... Um, yeah, multiple photos here, completely sped, complete radio blackout there. Probably R3, R4 R here, approaching R4 radio blackout. But, And we are going to talk about the cell phone outage and how it probably isn't related to space weather. But first, let's get to this plasma filament and the, the solar wind prediction here. You can see this is the plasma filament uh, as modeled by ISWA. And it is showing a glancing blow on the 25th. The WSA Enlil Spiral also has the model up. Let's just let that load up real quick here. And we'll make our way over there. Where is it? Where the heck did we go? All righty. Here we are at the WSA Enlil Spiral. And you'll see here on the 22nd that filament lift off of the sun and headed out. The green circle here is Earth. And they are showing a small spike in plasma density coming midday on the 25th. So could get to KP4 or 5 and maybe have some aurora. It's been a while. But what are these solar flares doing if there's no coronal mass ejections? What they're causing is radio blackouts, which are instantaneous and happening at the same time as the flare. They're worse on the daylight side that is looking at the sun when they're occurring, clearly. Solar flares are large eruptions or electromagnetic radiation storms from the sun lasting minutes to hours. The sudden outburst of electromagnetic energy travels at the speed of light. Therefore, any effect upon the sunlit side of Earth's exposed outer atmosphere occurs at the same time the event is observed, albeit about seven minutes after it occurs. <laughs> The increased level of X-rays and extreme ultraviolet EUV radiation results in an ionization in the lower layers of the ionosphere on the sunlit side of Earth. Now, under normal conditions, high-frequency radio waves are able to support communication over long distances by refracting via the upper layers of the ionosphere. But when a strong enough solar flare occurs, ionization Ionization is produced in the lower, more dense layers of the ionosphere called the D layer. And radio waves that interact with electrons and layers lose energy due to more frequent collisions that occur in the higher density environment in the D layer. This can cause HF radio signals to become degraded or completely absorbed. This results in a radio blackout. The absence of HF communication primarily impacting the 3 to 30 megahertz band or the DRAP produced correlates to flare intensity. Uh, so th what does that mean? Well, it means that probably it is unlikely that 
these solar flares caused the cell phone outage in the U.S. Not only that, they were off by a factor of three hours from the event to the outage. Um, and so probably not related. Interestingly enough, how do you like them apples? While solar flares can affect communication systems, radar, and the global positioning system based on the intensity of the eruption and associated phenomenon, typically coronal mass ejections and solar storms on Earth, it is highly unlikely that these flares contributed to the widely reported cellular network outages, they said. Do you want to believe them? It's anyone's guess, but maybe the flares affected the grid in some way. It's anyone's guess. Probably not, though. Our infrastructure is failing anyway, so who do you want to believe? Now, Intuitive Machines returns America to the moon surface for the first time since 1972. The first American moon landing since Apollo 17 marks a historic achievement in private space flight. The Nova Sea Lunar Lander... The year 2024... Uh, known as Odysseus, made a soft landing near the moon's south pole on Thursday. Now, they're trying to contact the lander. It might not have landed correctly, and so we're waiting for the news, probably in the morning. Because if they know something, and it's bad, they're certainly not going to want to get that out there quick. But in fact, we did land on the moon, according to the mission specialists. And here we can see that is, happening. Uh, it's really odd that they're not that excited. Take a look at this. We're evaluating... Uh, how we can refine that signal and uh, dial in the pointing for our dishes. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So, congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. One guy clapped. Yeah, that was absolutely bizarro world, but I guess they did land on the moon. Now, according to mainstream media USA Today, an extremely rare event. Satellite images show lake formed in famously dry Death Valley. The typically dry bad water basin salt flat at the bottom of Death Valley has for months been teeming with water after record rains and flooding have bannered eastern California since August. And it continues to fill after atmospheric rivers that just pummeled the state over the last few days. Now, they're claiming this is ex extremely rare, but for the last three years, this lake has existed and is only growing larger. So all the fear mongers that said it's never going to rain again in California and we're all burning up, they have to sh shove a sock in their mouth because they are full of bull dookie. Is that something? Now, who else is full of bull dookie is the mainstream media and the mainstream science cult that attacked Willie soon after he did his Tucker Carlson interview. We got him on the show just a few days later, the next day actually, and he explained himself and his position. And then today he sent me over this response to the attacks on his Tucker Carlson interview. Science Feedback, a fact checker organization, have generated disinformation about Seri Science. This is Willie Soon Science Group. And, well, he fought back, and he fought back in a big way. He published, I believe it's an 85-page expose to stick the foot up the <laughs> of the mainstream science cabal and the climate alarmist narrative. They're all liars. It's garbage science. It's junk science, and it can easily be provable. That's why we don't have lots of debates on the topic, because... Well, the extremists and the global warmists would get their ass literally handed to them in a big way. Hey, hey. Now, a massive fireball lights up the night sky across nearly a dozen states. So far, the American Meteor Society has not yet received any reports of Wednesday's space matter striking the ground. Less than 5% of meteors survive the friction and become a meteorite. But this is a big bolide. It's a big boomer. Take a look at this one. It's a blurry one. But it's a big bolide, and it stays pretty brightly lit until just about there. So what you're going to get from this is a few pebble-like or marble size objects that may hit the ground as they cool. But quite a nice bolide there. Now, residents across nearly a dozen states in Canada reported seeing a fireball in Wednesday night sky that some described as an event they'd never seen before because it was a bolide, which is a very bright 
it almost lights up the whole forest if it happens at night. And take a look, it was up in the Northeast. So people all the way up into Canada, near Ottawa, over in Michigan, down to Virginia, saw this baby. Let me know if you saw it. Google to fix the AI picture bot after woke criticism. And in fact, we just found out that the creator of Gemini uh, apparently isn't working on the project anymore or he's being attacked because he just shut down his Twitter and removed Gemini from the moniker. So something's happening there. Now, what was going on with the Gemini Google AI? It was a woke nightmare. You put in things like, draw me a picture of a Scottish man and it gave you a, an Indian guy. Um, complete garbage, which is the idiocracy that we live in now. I hope you watch the movie over on our Rumble channel. We put idiocracy up for free, already 1.2 thousand views in the last 24 hours. Go watch the modern documentary of the world you're living in. I also uploaded a four hour documentary that you all need to watch. So please mark your calendar for the century of the self, a full Adam Curtis documentary that is well worth watching, completely covers uh, how propaganda was perpetrated on the media, how we got to the idiocracy we're in, and it is decades old and very eye-opening. So please check that out for free over on our Rumble channel, Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Rumble. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow band. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do for as little as a dollar a month. Watch all of our podcasts commercial free in one place. We'll see you all at the San Luis Valley Seed Exchange, March 30th and 31st in Moffitt, Colorado. And that's a boom. New, new. We love you.